Starting with Spark 2.0, two new data model interfaces were introduced. They are data frames and data sets. Data frames are like RDDs in that they are immutable. But unlike an RDD that can store any object, objects stored in data frames are called rows and they have attributes called columns. This is very similar to relations. In fact, that's also how they are intended to be used, as we see here in this code snippet that projects the age column and add 10 to all the rows. Datasets are just like data frames, except that rather than general rows, they store objects of a predefined type. This makes it easier to detect coding errors. In fact, data frames are just data sets of rows. Here is a sample of methods provided by the new API. This should be very familiar to all of us by now. In fact, Spark even has a SQL API, and you can imagine how each of these operators are actually implemented underneath the covers. Well, at this point, you might ask, why do we bother, given that we already have SQL? Well, it looks like we started with the relational data model and the SQL. We decided to throw it away because of scalability issues. We then came up with no SQL data models, and now we kind of rediscover the benefits of relations. We can view this cynically and say this is just what goes around comes around. But on the other hand, we can also view this as a confluence of different techniques. We have learned a lot of cool algorithms to execute various relational operators. And combined with the NoSQL data model, this should give us something even more powerful. And I encourage you to read through this great article on different data models if you are interested. So in summary, in this lecture, we discussed MapReduce and Spark. They both use semi-structured data models to store data and have slightly different programming models. Hopefully going through this will teach you some lessons in how to evaluate future data models that you will encounter in your careers.